Continuing on with our discussion of digital logic simulators, um, this is the digital uh, logic simulator. It's a uh, freeware that you can get on GitHub. And uh, what I want to show you today is uh, um, splitters and tunnels. Splitters and tunnels. Okay. Well, let's start out with uh, splitters. Splitters allows us to take a bundle of wires and uh, and either merge them or separate them out so we can look at them either individually or as a crew. This is the basic splitter that comes in. I'm going to right click on this and show you the configuration. And 8 bits is total. This is the output. So all 8 bits are going to be grouped together. What the 4 comma 4 means is that uh, the first 4 and the second board are uh, bundled separately. You can actually split, uh, split these out even more. But we're going to just take this and use it as is just because it's, uh, it's the default. We're going to go into advanced and we're going to spread this out, give ourselves a little bit more room and we're going to say OK and we're going to show you how this works. Okay, So I'm going to put an output over here. Now since it's 8 bits I have to change this to uh, take in 8 bits. Okay, And we'll just leave that as is. Then we'll, the number format will be uh, binary we all we all understand binary and then input <coughs> over here will be two inputs and each one of these has to be four bits because these are grouped as four bits so let me go ahead and do this connect them up over here and change these to four bits and the format to binary <coughs> And then this will be 4 bits and change this to, to binary. And now we'll run the simulation. Okay. So you see that the simulation over here, well this 0 through 3 bits is the rightmost bit. So if we change this to 1010, uh, then those appear over here. And then this one will change to 1100, zero, zero, that's actually 12. And apply that, and we see that that shows up on the right hand side. Let me show you one other thing here with splitters before I go into Tuttle, stop this simulation. And let me change the configuration a little bit so that you can see uh, how to do this. Again, I'm just working with 8 bits, but the number of bits is immaterial. You can change the number of bits. So I'm going to change this to show you that we can separate out the bits uh, individually. And of course we want this uh, spread out just a little bit. And there we have. Now let me bring in another splitter and let me do the opposite. <coughs> let me take the input and say it's 8 bits coming in and the output is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8. 8. Say OK. OK. And again let me spread this out a little bit. Okay, so what we're going to have is we're going to have the 8 bits coming over here, and we're going to have the. Uh, I'm doing a con selecting this, doing a control C, and just pasting. Control V, control V. these up <clears throat> and now we're going to go over here and we're going to put inputs and we're going to do the same thing we're going to select it and, oops Control C, Control V, Control V, Control V, Control V, V, and there we go. And now we're going to connect these up, and we're going to show you that how this goes across. And this is a really a very nice way to actually just 
uh, kind of like a bus, is uh, kind of what we're looking at. I want to show you, that, convince you that this works. Splitters, very, very nice to have. They really are, especially if you're building a, a, a an earth managed logic unit. So let's start the simulation, and you can see that when we turn on the bits, the corresponding thing comes on. This is pretty cool. All right. <clears throat> Let's look at tunnels. Okay, we'll start simulation. We'll stop this simulation. And I'm going to uh, push the control button and select that wire and delete it. And then I'm going to put in a tunnel. And I'm going to show you how tunnels work. Okay, so we'll put a tunnel in there. And uh, it gives me a label. I've actually uh, uh, put in another uh, tunnel before, so I put in tunnel one, so it just incremented it to tunnel two. I'm actually going to change that to tunnel one and say OK. I'm going to put in another tunnel and it'll lay tunnel two. I'm going to change it to tunnel one, two. Now, the idea with tunnels is that what it does is two tunnels with the same name will get the same input. Okay, I'm actually going to rotate this one 180 degrees. And I'm going to put it down here. Oops. And connect it up there. And what a oops. What a tunnel does, it allows you to, to connect two circuits together uh, on the same page. Now I can't run across different circuits, but as long as they're on the same page here, this uh, this works and it works quite well. So Tunnel 1 will send everything to Tunnel 2. In fact, if I had more than tunnel one, one Tunnel 1, it would send it to those two. Again, it's directional, so uh, it's going to go from uh, this tunnel to that tunnel, since this is the output and this is the input. And when I start the simulation, <coughs> we're going to see here that indeed it does work. So that's, uh, that's actually pretty cool. So let's just convince ourselves that uh, We'll stop the simulation. Let me put in another tunnel, okay, and show you tunnel one. Oops. Okay, and again, uh, I'm going to rotate this to 180 degrees. Okay, and over here on output, I'm just going to put this. And I'm going to change the bits to 8 bits. And we're going to, the number format will be in uh, binary. And we'll say OK. And we'll, simulation, we'll start the simulation. And you'll see that whenever I turn these on over here, both the uh, LEDs over here and this binary get the same input. Very, very handy stuff to have. It really is. Uh, well, this is splitters and tunnels in digital logic. And uh, if you uh, enjoyed this, press like and consider subscribing to my channel. And look forward to doing another one for you. Let's look at uh, decoders and uh, multiplexers in the digital logic simulator. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, decoders. Uh, fairly fairly straightforward things to do. Let me pull one down here. Here is a, a decoder. Now what a decoder does basically is um, you can turn on a switch, a number of switches, and just say, yeah, turn this one on. In other words, I want to do this one. Okay. Um, to illustrate how it works, I'll put one down here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the number of selector bits is going to be three. Now, the reason I picked three is because that allows us to represent a number zero through seven or eight things. I'm going to flip it so that the uh, selector position is on top. It's a very common thing to do. So here's our selector position on top, and this is the output. And what I'm going to do is, given this selector bit, I'm going to turn any one of these on one at a time. So I'm going to put a uh, uh, input up here, and I'm going to change it to three bits. And I'm going to rotate it to 270 degrees, so, so it points down, and the default will be binary. We like binary. 
Alright, so there is our switch and I'll connect it to here. So those are the three bits coming in. And what it's going to do is it's going to tell it 0 through 7 which one of these to turn on. And to show you how that works, I'm going to put uh, LEDs on these so you can see how it works. 0 is up at the top. 8 of these. <coughs> And there's seven, and here it is eight. Oops, move it up. There we go. And we'll go ahead and connect them up. You just have to hit escape after that. Click, click, escape, click, click, escape, click. Oops, click, click, escape, click, click, escape. Click, click, escape, and then finally the last one. There we go. All right, now let's start the simulation. So we start the simulation, and you'll see up here this is uh, three bits, and zero, it's a zero right now, is uh, turned on, which means that the zero light is turned on. One of them has to be turned on all the time. So now I'm going to turn on one zero one, which is five. And apply that one. So zero, one, two, three, four. There's five right there. Let me turn on seven, which is all of them. And there is seven. That one's turned on. So it's it allows us to turn something off individually. I can't turn more than one on, just one at a time, but allows me to alternate between them. One has to be on at all times. That's a decoder, right? That's how a decoder works. Let me show you a multiplexer. Now, a multiplexer uses a decoder, okay? And what the multiplexer is designed to do is to uh, say to select which output is going to be allowed to go through. Let me stick this and delete them. <coughs> so, components. I'm going to do plexers, and you'll see we have multiplexer, demultiplexer, decoder, bit selector. We're going to do multiplexer and put it down here. Do a little bit more simpler multiplexer. Uh, the basic one comes with the data bits and the number of selector bits. The number of selector bits are the tells us how many things can come out. If I pick two, um, that gives us four things: zero, one, two, and three. The number of data bits is how much data goes through those. So this is a very very flexible model. Um, normally, the more bits that we have, the more complex things get, but uh, Let's just go ahead and say, well, let's just pick two bits. So two bits can come up. So, uh, and I'm going to flip the selector bits. I always flip the selector bits. So there we have. So here are the four things coming in. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this selector bit up here to tell us which one of these actually wins to come to the output. So we're going to uh, take the uh, output right here. We have to do a, an output, IO, an output over here and all right and then we're going to change the number of bits to two because that's that's how many data bits we're going to say. we'll label it output output and we will show it as a binary someday I'll show you what the others look like and now we're going to do the input all right the input right here and again these are all two-bit inputs two bit inputs and we will say they go to advanced and we will say they are also in binary and to save ourselves some time uh, I'm going to select it do a control C copy it and put those out here and there's the four of them right there Oops, there we go and we're going to click that over. So we have two bit selectors, which tells us 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and data bits, which are two bits. No relation between the two of them. I could have made this 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, as many bits as I want. This diagram would look exactly the same. Let us go ahead and put the selector bit in here. I've got to rotate it 270 degrees, so it points down. And this is the difference format is binary and again to move it I 
pick on it and I just move the mouse. I don't hold the control button or the mouse button down. Click it to let it go. And now we can run our simulation. So let's run our simulation here. Start simulation. Oh, what says it's E. <coughs> oh, I see. We gotta go up here and we gotta change this to two bits. Thank you for correcting me. All right, now we'll start our simulation. There we go. All right, so this is zero, and uh, we'll say this one is uh, zero one, and we'll say this is uh, one zero for two, and we'll say this is one one. <laughs> okay, now right now up here our selector bit is saying zero zero, which means that this is the one that's winning right here. This is the uh, this, uh, so let's go up here and let's change it to 1-1 one, one. and we see that ah, this is the one that actually selected come out. Let's uh, just to show you what that uh, it is the one coming out we'll change this one to 0-1 uh, and you'll see that ah. So what a multiplexer allows us to do it acts as a gate and what the gate does is it selects which uh, which data is allowed to actually go through to the output so it's a, it kind of looks like a switch very very handy things to have very handy things to have and we'll use these uh, quite a bit uh, in uh, developing our logic circuits well these are decoders and multiplexers it's worthwhile to play around with these a little bit so you kind of understand how they work and uh, configure them and uh, uh, if you like this video press like uh, please consider subscribing to the channel and uh, I look forward to doing more of these for you